Welcome to the Taxing Subjects Podcast, brought to you by Drake Software. I'm Ryan Norton, and today we're going to discuss Drake Accounting Software. Uh, much like tax preparation packages, choosing the right accounting software is a very important part of your year going into uh, tax season, or if you're doing accounting, your accounting season. And whether you're you know, looking to make a change, or you're just starting out, uh, it can be hard to know what program to choose. And so we're going to be joined today by Drake Accounting Development Manager, Jay Eager, and he's going to make the case for Drake Accounting. Welcome to the show, Jay. Good to be here. Developing an accounting product is a very serious undertaking. And some people, some accountants, may not have heard of Drake Accounting. Um, and this may be the first time they've ever even heard about it. Could you talk about roughly how long it's taken your team uh, to develop the product? Absolutely. Um, first, I'd point out that for, uh, for the layperson, for someone not in computer science, not in software development, uh, often there's more than, than meets the eye. Uh, it takes a lot longer <laughs> to develop quality products than you might expect from the outside looking in. And to be honest, if you go all the way back, uh, I think you can trace the origins to the roughly 2010-2011 time frame. Uh, my predecessor, Bill Fury, was in charge of Client Write-Up, which is our legacy accounting application. Uh, it's in its 18th and final year now. And by 2010-2011, I think he recognized uh, that looking forward to look to the next 20 years or so, uh, it was time for what I would describe, uh, perhaps in automotive terms, uh, as a ground up frame off restoration, if you will. Sure. A uh, quality product, vastly underrated. But we were seeing an ever increasing uh, number of users, no advertising, just word of mouth. Uh, like I said, it is its quality product, and we have a loyal customer base that was on the rise. And we started to realize that to, to position ourselves well for the next 20 years, um, you know, we needed better infrastructure, we needed a richer development tool set um, to be able to handle that expansion of customers and requests. So in 2010, 2011, uh, we started taking a serious look at what it would, what it would require. And uh, in early 2011, we started work on what we kind of jokingly refer to as CW 2099, <laughs> which was really meant to be just a recast of, of, of the legacy software. That's how it started. Um, I would describe 2012 through 14 as formative years, really. Um, we started, uh, th this company over the years has, has uh, greatly increased its um, security and uh, PII stance, so we take, we take the data that we warehouse extremely seriously. So one of the first places we started was in, data, was in uh, secure and encrypted data storage. So we worked from our back end forward, uh, just from the ground up, better underlying technologies, and by 2014 we felt like we had enough to, in 2015, uh, put an alpha together for our own team. So our own accountants, our own business analysts, uh, automated and manual testers, developers started dog fooding our own product. That would be the alpha year. <clears throat> In 2016, uh, we were ready for a couple dozen customers to take a look. So that becomes then a beta. You have outside users. They're looking at it through the lens of the, you know, of an accountant, a CPA. Um, and based on those results, we moved uh, from a couple dozen users at the end of 2016 to roughly quadruple that amount at the beginning of 2017 as we opened our release candidate software. Let me stop you there real quick. Sure. What is a release <laughs> candidate? For people who, like we said before, who might not know anything about sure. software development, what is a release candidate? And maybe the difference between that and a beta. I gotcha. Uh, it is an important part of a software development life cycle. Um, as stated, you know, the alpha is an internal facing product. The beta is a very limited number of customers. We chose folks who were very familiar with us, with our product, and we were able to simply look over their shoulder and see their experience. Um, when a company has a strong candidate for production release, and we felt strong about Drake Accounting, 
Um, the third tier, if you will, is to then open that up for the general public. And, and by general public, I mean our entire customer base, so tax users, qualifying write-up users. So the release candidate is essentially a preview of a product we feel is ready to stand up for production, uh, but with the caveat that this is a release candidate. Right, not the final product. Um, and it's undergoing rapid development changes. I mean, we work in a very aggressive, agile environment, so we're constantly fine-tuning. If you're willing to jump into the mix early, uh, and perhaps put up with some of the final shuffle, you get a chance to look at the at the product before anyone else. And in some, in, in no small part, to, to perhaps adjust our trajectory. As we get uh, a broader mix of release candidate users, we start to surface issues we wouldn't have seen from perhaps a handful. So the release candidate is a third stage testing after alpha and beta prior to software release. Just a last minute, uh, or a last minute ability for folks to get in and really provide feedback that impacts what we do in development. Um, and we did that through 2017. This year, 2018, is what we're calling our year zero. Um, it is a production product at this point, uh, but it's, it's, it's uh, bundled with right up, so you get both products. And this is our overlap here. It'll be another way to describe it. Uh, so looking forward to 2019, in about two, two and a half weeks now, we're going to release the first paid year, and yeah. needless to say, we are excited. <laughs> yeah. Very stoked. Um, but yeah, that's been the progression. Um, it's, it's at this point been six, seven years that we've been working hard on this, uh, and it's all coming into play. Well, after six, seven years, um, what niche, you've, you've kind of talked about it as an accounting product, but that, that's a pretty wide field. It is. So what niche was your team hoping to fill uh, when work on Drake Accounting began? Sure. And how has that changed over the course of development? A good question, actually. Uh, when it began, as described, we were simply re-outfitting right up to withstand the next 20 years right. uh, would be a way of looking at it. So when it began, it was literally just an extension of what we were already doing. But with more modern tools, um, and I will say this, um, I take the byline on at least my business card, comprehensive accounting program, yeah. uh, as a statement of intent, um, and also as a daily challenge. Uh, write up, client write up, uh, is a way to refer to the after the fact uh, bookkeeping aspect of accounting. So. You're not, you're not in control of a customer's uh, checkbook, and you're not issuing live payroll. You're more recording after the fact, accounts payable, receivable, and you're providing financial statements. But right up, very shortly after its inception really, started to, to uh, grow beyond its own, its own title. Um, the write up product does payroll, for instance, live, direct deposits, things like that. So. Right up had already outgrown its name, which is one reason for the name change. Again, we initially intended just to morph client right up as is uh, behind the scenes. But really, after a lot of thinking on it, uh, it does offer a full range of accounting features uh, and appeals to, I think, a diverse set of customers, bookkeepers, payroll processors, CPAs. So we wanted to, uh, to acknowledge that in the name. Sure. Drake Accounting, not client right up. And I think the danger when you say comprehensive accounting program um, is perhaps you end up being a jack of all trades, but a master of none. That's the pitfall there. We don't want to be good at a lot of stuff. We want to be the best, the right. absolute best. That's yeah. the big danger there. So, uh, you know, it began uh, simply as a recast of client write up, and as it grew, and as we realized, I think the power of uh, sort of our new suite of development tools, um, we started really working to unify the product, to provide consistency between the modules, um, and to really put strength upon strength. Uh, most notably in our payroll arena, we have a, a large number of payroll users. And I, I would say at this point, coming into 2019, I feel confident that we're at masters, if not perhaps PhD level, at least in the payroll arena. And like I said, it's a daily cha challenge. The work continues. Yeah. Um, definitely. 
staying in this realm, um, Drake Software is known as an industry leader in customer support, especially um, what with the short uh, wait times on support calls, even during tax season. Oh yeah. Um, did development of Drake Accounting take customer feedback into account? Now you said that people who got in on the uh, release candidate were able to shape sure the program. Absolutely. So. Is there influence beyond that release candidate? And will there be? And if there will be, what does that look like? Uh, actually, really kind of as uh, by way of clarification, I guess I'd say, one of the big uh, factors in Bill's mind, I mentioned an increasing customer base. Um, we had at the time we started uh, the, uh, with Drake Accounting, I want to say between 1,000 and maybe 1,100 outstanding customer requests. Those continued to build, and our turnaround times were just not where we wanted them to be. So we had a backlog, if you will, of over 1,000 customer requests ranging from huge new features to new forms, uh, new tax and wage reports, that sort of thing. So I think more or less for Bill it was an acknowledgement of the fact that we had customer feedback, we wanted to address it, we want to be responsive in development. So one of the first tasks uh, when I came in, and especially after I took over as team lead, um, was to, Bill asked me to build an environment so that a small to medium sized team could work in tandem with a minimum of stepping on toes, work together uh, to build you know, we wanted to create a software development environment uh, fit for agile development and responsive customer support. Uh, you're right, our support is industry standard the best. And uh, you know, we, we took the application we had plus the thousand plus requests. And really throughout the entire process, uh, even in the beta, you know, like I said, we're looking over customer shoulders, watching what they do, how they operate, asking them for feedback. Um, we hold uh, once a year a development-led uh, preview class of the next year product, and we listen to the customers there. Um, in addition, right out of the product on the help menu, you can provide feedback. It goes directly into our planning system. Um, it, we may not respond same day or next day, but it is in planning. We don't lose requests from customers. Uh, we are absolutely uh, customer-driven when it comes to product development and the, fo the ongoing focus of the product. So for us, it's a huge part of what we do, uh, both beta and in the release candidate, and even now going forward into production. Um, customer requests come in. Uh, as I mentioned, they, they go directly into our planning system. Uh, they're prioritized from there. We group them contiguously into the appropriate module or component. Sort them by priority, and we, we, we crunch through them. Um, we are absolutely driven, though, by uh, customer feedback, and we do make an effort to get into the field. Um, uh, myself, uh, some of my colleagues, we go out, we speak at uh, Society of Accountant meetings, present, we listen to what, what the requests are. Um, in fact, some things on deck now for payroll uh, are sourced from customers. Um, we've had requests from a variety of customers uh, to provide uh, bulk uh, EFTPS tax payments, so we're going to export to their bulk payment system. Um, likewise, we have we currently have in place a way that you can file your 9-4-Xs in bulk. Uh, we don't ha currently have that with Social Security Administration for W-2, W-3. But it's coming, and that is by customer request. So. You mentioned that uh, you sort them by priority. Mm -hmm. um, how do you set priority for requests? Is it a um, we've received X number of requests for a thing? Is it um, a request has been made that was already in the pipeline, so that kind of highlights the thing that you think now needs to be brought to the fore? Um, sure. How, how is that priority set? You're, you're right there on it. We, uh, our system, we have an agile planning and development system. Uh, issues that come in, uh, we have a way, when we see a pattern, uh, more than one issue uh, or more than one request for the same, for the same uh, feature, uh, we have a way to sort of, if you will, upvote that. Sure. Um, it's kind of a loosely described a way to do that. Um, we do look for patterns, though, in requests. Um, 
we're not maybe quite to the point of public facing that and let our own customers up and down vote requests, but that's <laughs> not off the table. That would be possible with our system. Uh, but we're able to tag similar issues uh, and associate them with each other. So we sure. can have this issue duplicates another request, and then when we see duplication beyond two, three, four, it gets our attention. When we see a few dozen, we know this is a hot item. Um, we have a focus group. Uh, it's a closed focus group. You actually have to have been to one of our developer-led preview classes. Right. But the folks who come to the preview class are able to opt into our focus group. And often, uh, we will create uh, either a PDF or a small PowerPoint presence, a, a slideshow of a potential new feature. And then we put that in front of the focus group. And we, we kind of let them pick it apart, put it back together, tell us what they like, dislike, that sort of thing. Uh, but you're absolutely right. We have a way to keep... Uh, sort of a barometer on sure. customer interest and request and as requests come in if they are the same you know variations on a theme um, that's it's a neat thing about our system uh, you're able to link requests uh, you can you can have not only association of, of various requests but request blocking as well so this is a great idea but until we get this done you can't even start right. so we're able to block and that helps us with our timelines. It helps yeah. us understand when we'll be able to bring uh, a particular feature to market, which is another important thing. You can't, um, you know, we want to be as responsive as possible, but if we promise every, if we say yes to everything and right. promise the world, we'll fail to deliver. Uh, on the other hand, if you completely ignore customers, right. um, we have to land somewhere in the middle. So for us, um, being able to see just how uh, popular a request is and where it fits into the timeline is what allows us to be responsive ultimately in development. So, Well, <clears throat> we've covered basically the, um, the life of the product as far as through development, six, seven years of hard development time. Um, the product itself during development was being influenced by customers. That's not going to change in the future, it sounds like. Absolutely not. Um, so let's get to the main event. What people probably <laughs> are tuning in to listen about sure. uh, and listen for would be, uh, what are the standout features? So I know we talked about it's a comprehensive product. Absolutely. But within any comprehensive product, there's going to be some features, some bells and whistles <laughs> that are yeah. going to catch people's eyes. The high right? notes, absolutely. Yeah. Right off the top, 2019 brings to the table multi-location payroll. That's going to be the sort of the crown jewel mm -hmm. of this year's offering. Now, I've, I've heard of multi-state. Exactly. That, if from the customer perspective, you nailed it. I've been to, since I've gotten here, every year uh, we sit in on uh, the classes that happen at the Education Center. Bill and I, in years previous, would get up and give 15, 20 minutes about what we're doing in development, where we're going. We have a call for questions every year. The one question, will you guys offer multi-state <laughs> payroll? Oft asked, um, when we would ask for details, how would that look? What, 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 what do you envision? Um, it, it's, it's easy to say. It's hard to, to expand upon, really. Um, I understand where, the, where the, you know, the driver behind the request. And the reason we went multi-location instead of multi-state, to be honest, um, is to completely uh, describe the benefit. Now, multi-state payroll, it is multi-state capable, absolutely. If you have employees working in more than one state, um, it's often the case that their unemployment will localize correctly to a different state, perhaps from where they're living, right. maybe even from where the company is based. Yeah, um, We're based out here out of North Carolina. Uh, we do have a shop in Tennessee, obviously. Um, if we had workers who are, uh, you know, say we open up a shop in Georgia, if you if you report to work there, if your work localizes there, um, that's where you would would you be paying your unemployment, um, and the same thing goes for the for the for the tax forms as well. So wage and state wage and tax forms correctly localize. So it is it is multi state capable. But for us, um, we wanted to illustrate, we wanted to put a, an underline on the location uh, part sure. of that. Because for a lot of folks, especially folks in Ohio and in Kentucky, uh, they have locality taxes, mm -hmm. uh, Ohio especially. Uh, every location in Ohio has uh, a municipal and a, a school district tax. So if you work in multiple locations, so you work in a big city like Cleveland, um, 
and you travel throughout the city, by the end of the week, you're going to have racked up quite a number of locality taxes each at a different location. One of the huge benefits of the 2019 payroll, when you go to set up, you can decide, you can let the software know whether a particular employer is multi-location, and if so, you establish each location, and then as you add employees, you uh, assign them to locations as appropriate. When you set up their locality taxes, those are location specific. So if, for instance, in Cleveland, if you're working in Cleveland, you head over to Dayton for a day, uh, Parma's an outskirts of Cleveland, so you end up with three different localities. Prior to your software, you could enter the hours, um, but the localities will all calculate off of, say, 40 hours, mm -hmm. meaning you have to pull out a calculator and do some manual adjustments. That's a non-starter if you're in business. Um, it's just simply too much work. So with the 2019 offering, once you set up the locations, you just enter hours by location, and then everything, including your state uh, withholdings and, in fact, the locality deductions uh, work out. And you can set up any benefit or deduction to be uh, specific to a locality, specific to a state, or global. Your 401k, for instance, I hope no matter where you work, the contributions add up, yeah. that sort of thing. So we chose multi-location payroll. Um, it is multi-state. But we wanted to point out that for uh, states that had locality taxes, this is a beautiful offering. Uh, and in fact, I believe the only sub thousand dollar offering with multi-location or multi-state payroll. So very powerful portion of the product. Um, and as mentioned, with uh, the EFTPS batch payments, um, bringing a direct connect to the SSA online, um, these are powerful things, the icing on the cake, if you will, for the payroll side of things. Um, another big one coming in 19, uh, graphical reports, graphical sure. and drill down reports. Now we use uh, Crystal Reports, which is SAP software. They do business objects. Um, for the uninitiated, I mean, they're, they're the same reports that you've uh, perhaps seen in, the, in our prior offerings only this year, yeah. <laughs> we're taking it up a notch. So we've been using uh, Crystal Reports technology, which is simply just a, uh, a technology to aggregate and present data you know, to a customer. Uh, it, we chose that and we've had some questions, why, why do I have to install this Crystal Report assembly? Uh, it's a separate install, it's bundled with our product, but it, it installs separately. Um, we knew from the get-go we wanted to do more in reporting. Um, in fact, I would say our accounting, our financial reports are one of our biggest growth areas right mm -hmm. now, very hot. Um, that's to us uh, a reflection of the stance we're, we're taking in, uh, across the program, which is we're, we're working diligently to lower the data entry hurdles and to improve the outputs of the program. And reporting, uh, especially for an accountant, these are the reports you present to your customers. You want them to be professional. Right. You want them to look sharp. And to me, uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. You can tell someone they're losing money, or you can show them they're losing money. And when you show them, it puts a fine point on it. Mm -hmm. uh, to give you some specific examples, we do pie charts of uh, expense and revenue. So your customer may look at that pie chart and say, what am I doing spending this much of the pie yeah. uh, on shipping and handling? And they may decide to bulk rate uh, postal instead of priority mail, that sort of thing. Who knows? Uh, but you can take a look at your expenses as a pie chart. Very easy to see where you're spending money. The same for your income. Uh, another one, another by demand or by request, I should say, report will be a multi-line uh, and, in fact, multi-year uh, by month revenue. So you can look at this October's revenue compared to last October and the one before and decide if your revenue is on the uptick or perhaps tapering off. Um, so the graphical reports are just a great way to aggregate data yeah. and present a really concise and clear representation of where somebody's at financially. Um, drill down reports, slightly different variation on the same theme. In fact, the graphical reports do drill down. And by that, I mean, if you see that pie and you say, wait a second, what's going on with all this, uh, with, you know, all this, uh, let's just Extra say travel expenses. expenses. Yeah. You know, where am I spending money in travel? You can double click on that and you can get to the detail and decide who's, who's taking, uh, 
you know, business class as compared to coach, for instance. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but the ability to drill down into the detail. Right. So you look at a profit and loss, you see summaries, you decide you want to look in a little more detail, you double click, you're presented with the detail behind that. Um, that's the idea. That's kind of what we're working on with the, with the, the reporting aspect of the program. And we're making big progress on it. We feel really good about it. Um, that's work that'll continue in the coming years. Um, and to go back to the customer feedback, this is exactly the kind of, of move we make. We, we have customers who ask for, uh, you know, more professional reports, ask for graphical reports. It's an oft, oft heard refrain. <laughs> it helps their clients make decisions about their own business. Absolutely. When they see the reports. Absolutely. And, and like I said, it really, we, we recognize, of course, in my group, we recognize it's Drake Accounting. Um, we take the name seriously, as you mentioned. We're known throughout the industry, good, good, better, best support. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's important to us, and we recognize um, that when Acme Accounting installs our product and begins to present financials to their customers, their name is on the line. Right. And we want the sharpest product for our customers to present to their clients. So that, that's graphical reports, drill down reports, take us a huge leap forward in that regard. And then, of course, the multi-location payroll, which, um, again, it is multi-state payroll plus. Plus. Absolutely, plus. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty exciting. That's what's on deck this year, and it is exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, then the final question would be, um, as creatures of habit, I mean, I am one. I'm not an accountant, but I am certainly a creature of <laughs> habit. Um, but what do you say to accountants who are hesitant to change their accounting software. You know, they they may have been using it for years, True. decades. Um, we've talked about what makes Drake Accounting stand out, but what's your final pitch to them to change their mind? Quality products, better support, honest pricing, responsive development. We strive daily to build quality products. We're known throughout the industry as having the best support. As you mentioned, mm -hmm. even in the height of call season, I don't think the phone rings three times before you have somebody on the line. Um, why switch? Uh, the honest pricing to me is an important bit. Mm -hmm. um, I see ads online for other products, $249. Um, I would challenge you to get in and use it for a year <laughs> as a yeah. pro-grade accountant. You're going to discover they have verticals. It starts at that price. You have more than five people on payroll. You want to direct deposits. You want to e-file your uh, wage and tax forms. Um, try doing it and keeping your wallet closed. <laughs> Here, we're very upfront. Um, the pricing, what you see is what you get, so we're honest in that. Uh, and as I mentioned, the responsive development, the, a big portion uh, of, the th of, of our thought process was how do we get better at addressing our customers' concerns, their requests. Um, as, as, as you mentioned, this is something that uh, is not just part of it. It's not limited to our beta. It's not just our release candidate. We continue to listen. Uh, as I've pointed out, you can go right from the software, provide feedback directly into our development system. So we are responsive, and, and with, with this product, we're able to measure our turnaround on average request in days, perhaps weeks, instead of weeks and months, right. perhaps longer. So my pitch would literally be quality products, better support, honest pricing, and responsive development. I think that's where we're at. <laughs> that sounds like so. a pretty good pitch. Jay, I just want to thank you for being here. And uh, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's been a pleasure talking to you. Surely. And that's going to be it for today. We'll see you all on the next Taxing Subjects podcast. <laughs>